Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Sarcasm and Orgasms. I am your host, Will, and I want to thank you for listening and tuning into another episode. So, today we have a part two. I have spoke with this lady before. She brought really good energy, great conversation, and words of wisdom to you and me all. She is now our resident advisor on everything relationships. I want to give my my guest, Miss Gail Lynn. How are you today? I am doing fantastic. Thank you for having me back. Oh, I had a blast last time. Yes, definitely. Thank you. I did as well. And I got so much like positive feedback uh, when I had people reach out to me say, when are you going to have Gail on? Because there's more that we want to learn. I'm thinking, I want to learn too, because she said so many things that I just did not know about. So, All right. Well, let's see where we can go. Well, we are going to go a lot of places, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's just more about uh, how we get there, what is being said during. So... So let me ask you this. I would love for you to speak more on polyamorous relationships to start, please. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. So um, polyamory, many loves. Mm -hmm. So it breaks down into poly, which is many, and amory, which is loves. All right. So if you think of it in that term, it really simplifies the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, instead of one love, you have many loves. And so, you know, usually in these kind of relationships, um, you can break it down into all different ways. And it's really a matter of what you and your partner or partners want to create together. Okay. So it could be, um, something where you have like your primary person and then you kind of have more of like an open relationship where you might um, meet with somebody here and there or Mm -hmm. a one-off or you know something like that Um, or it could be where you're actually living together yeah like a throuple type situation Uh, or you know you you know you have two different partners or mm-hmm. they're you know and the other partner has two different partners it can just it can look so many different ways so really it's up to you know what works with your lifestyle because one of the biggest things is you can become polysaturated polysaturated how can you, you get saturated with many loves i mean well, you could do it but... <laughs> Because there's only so much time in a day. True, true. <laughs> and a week. And, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. So sometimes, you know, it, it's it really depends on your lifestyle, you know, and what you have time for, and and uh, what everybody is agreeing to, and what you're up to. So, in your expertise uh, and understanding, what has been almost the what has been the it as okay we have a poly lifestyle this is how we do it what is the yin and the yang to it <laughs> the, the, the yin and the yang okay i think i get how you're asking this uh-huh. um you know the basically you're like what are the pros and the cons yes there you go sorry <laughs> we're <thinking> cause <laughs> 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 That's okay. So, um, you know, it can get complicated. It definitely can. It, it, um, you know, when you're in a polyamorous situation, definitely more communication and really having those good communication skills is important. Um, because, uh, you know, you're dealing with more than one personality and a very, um, you know, around sex and relationships and who gets this much time and, hey, I want more time with you. And, you know, so you're navigating a lot more stuff mm-hmm. within, you know, when you have many people at play. Yes. So, you know, with monogamy, a lot of times it's simple. It's just you have that one person and um, it stays a little bit more simple. So at least that's what they um, think. <laughs> like, this, like i heard this one joke it's like my girl and i we've been together for five years but little does she know i only been with her for six months so <laughs> <laughs> yes yes uh-huh I think, 
I think he needs to maybe, you know, revamp that relationship a little bit. <laughs> like I said, that's that's what she thought. I, I found it wildly funny and entertaining. Like, oh my god, that's a shitty relationship. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's um, a, a couple that I knew, and and uh, you know. It was kind of one of those situations where, hey, you know, no, you know, I know how to get my way with you. I just have sex with you. That's yeah. how I, I can get my way, right? Mm -hmm. And then she confesses that she's been doing that since they've been married. <laughs> okay. Like any time she wanted something, she just knew she could get it if she gave him sex. So, you know, it's, you know. Well, they do say there is power in the pussy, so. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> this, this, we might live in a, you know, a dictatorship world, but you know what? The, the pussy rules everything. So. <laughs> You're a smart man. <laughs> I'm going to give you some credit there. <laughs> I'm just saying, being a man who's dealt with women on many different levels and different forms, no matter what, you'll do something stupid, do something stupid for just that little slice of heaven. So, I think, you know, if like pussy really came in a bag, it would be robbed every single day. Every day. <laughs> Gosh. Come on. You mean to tell me you wouldn't want to package your pussy in the bag? You should be like, here you go, love. You don't have to cheat. I bagged it for you. Just take it whatever you want. <laughs> You got a new invention, something in there. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If pussy came in bags, I mean, this world would just be lovely. There would be no rape. There would be no sexual, uh, sexual harassment or anything like that. You could just take it wherever you want. Take out the bag, <laughs> do what you need to go, or just throw it away. Of course, be just I think like they that. have things kind of like that. <laughs> I mean, who wants to take Probably a not the same. No, no. I think the real authentic thing is always better than just a cheap knockoff. So. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, there's dangers in the knockoff stuff. Yeah, I'm sure you don't want to be walking around with rubber dicks in your pocket. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I must confess, I like the true, authentic <laughs> flesh. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm just saying, you know, sometimes the, the authentic is so much better than the knockoff. You know? Oh, so definitely. Whether, you know, you want your rubber or I want my flesh, we all, we all want something. <laughs> but no, please continue. I'm sorry to get off topic. <laughs> okay. So... Um, so, uh, I would say, you know, also, um, within, you know, just that polyamory lifestyle is, um, is really knowing who you are and what you desire, because getting, like I said, when you get into this and you start dealing with the dynamics of all these different relationships on a very close level, because, you know, when you physically get close with somebody, it, it definitely brings it to that next level. It's not yes. just a friend anymore. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, if you understand kind of how you function and maybe even what your attachment style is, because that's another thing that I really uh, discuss with people is, um, you know, are, are you securely attached? Do you have kind of an anxious attachment style or do you have like an avoidant attachment style? So when things are under pressure, you know, what do you do? Do you cling, you know, and get really anxious or do you like back away and I'm out of here? This doesn't mm -hmm. work for me right now, right? Yeah. Or are you secure? You can just kind of handle it and take it as it comes and goes. So I would say, you know, in those situations, it's really good to really know yourself um, when you're when you're stepping into these areas. And it's a great way to get to know yourself, let me tell you, because, you know, things are going to come up like jealousy type issues and things like that. And so then when you can start observing kind of what's going on within you, then you can realize even like with jealousy, the way I, I view jealousy is 
uh, if I'm jealous of somebody else, it's because I see an aspect of me and them that I could be just like them. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so when I take that back into my arena and myself, then it changes it up. Oh, you know, it doesn't, you know, think about it because if you're just like, if you have these feelings of jealousy and you just like, you can't make sense of them, then it's, it's going to create all kinds of stuff, all kinds of emotions and feelings and triggers. And, you know, you might have some trauma that comes up, which is all good things because all those things need to be looked at and, and really brought to the surface. So you can have these relationships in a very good healed manner. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's really kind of understanding yourself. Well, a lot of people don't want to understand themselves, especially if you say, oh, I want to be with you, but I want to take another dick. And you'd be thinking like, what? Why yeah, do you want to take another dick? Oh, I mean, just, I mean, that's why the communication is important. Mm-hmm. Like really getting, you know, down to like, why is that there? And that's yeah. what I had to do with Dave is like, why is that there? And, and once you can you know, be authentic about why you want to do it, then you can go somewhere. Mm-hmm. But when you just come out and say, you know, like when Dave came to me and he said, Hey, I want to go have sex with somebody else. I, I took it all always wrong. You know, I took it that there's something wrong with me. I'm not good enough. See how everything starts to come to the surface. You really get those, those big feelings that start coming up. And so then you have to kind of zoom back kind of observe what's going on and really get down to what's underneath that because the fact was i i'm good enough i i'm totally good enough it was something that he just wanted to experience or remember and remember how you said he wanted to journey with somebody else <laughs> he did. And, and for those of you those of you make sure you listen to the very first one episode i did with her where she brought up she said he wanted to go off and journey and i'm like who the hell wants to journey he just wants to cheat that's all he wants to do <laughs> But I'm sorry. Please, please, please. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> Those are your words, not mine. Well, here's the thing. Like, yeah, he had his own shit. Mm-hmm. Okay, no, no doubts. He he definitely had his own. And he's dealing with it too, you know. Mm-hmm. Um but on my part, I'm always looking at me first. Yes. And 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 seeing where if there's something within me that needs to some kind of belief in, in me that needs to be updated. Um and then I can kind of make that evaluation from there. Mm-hmm. So, so always looking at myself and it doesn't excuse some of the things that happened or, you know, the way it went down or anything like that. It's just, I, I always encourage everybody to, well, what's going on in you? Like what's coming up because relationships are, are like mirrors for each other. They, um, anytime a friendship, a a boss, any kind of relationship, they're there, they're kind of showing you some kind of aspect of yourself. Yeah. And so if you want to recognize that that's what these relationships are doing for you, then it's going to give you a lot of information about you and what you really want. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to show you what do you want in life? What (laughs) don't you want in life? And help you really define what kind of life you want to live. Yep, definitely. Um, It doesn't. If you are able to take a inventory of yourself, you are you are reluctant to find that you might have some triggers that you're unaware of, especially if you have a partner saying, well, let's sit down and talk about it, let's figure it out. But no one is willing to be honest with themselves and with their partner, because then you have cheating involved. So no one's really will take a, a hardship to say, oh, I'm messing up because of such and such. Yeah, well, you know, and that's why, that's my message. We don't need to cheat. There's other ways, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk about it, you know? So I'm on the show, so everybody gets to start taking a personal inventory. <laughs> right? But, uh, yeah, and you're right. I, 
if people would just have more honest conversations about what they're not happy with like i had a relationship where i told her i'm not happy with us anymore because of not only the things i'm doing but the things you're doing is causing me to make me feel unhappy and almost inadequate and then she was almost like well what am i doing wrong and when you try to explain someone of what they're doing wrong as to how you're they're making you feel they start feeling like well you're attacking me or you're not giving me a chance like it's not that i'm trying to help you to help me but no one likes to see it that way it's always a you 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 you're doing this to me such and such and it makes it almost very hard to have an honest like a very honest relationship with people because no one ever takes a consider a consideration of how your feelings are and what's going on yeah well again it's so easy to point it to the other person mm-hmm. right and then yep. play victim uh-huh. right it's super easy to do that and you know in in communication that's that's where the communication really needs to uh, kind of step up so that you can um, communicate in a way that people don't feel attacked or some kind of moralistic judgment in it uh-huh. you know um, and, and so really trying to refine how that is so that you can um, allow that other person not to feel like you're attacking them. So what things can you say to a person to where they don't feel attacked that says, I'm unhappy, I'm thinking about going out and cheating on you, but I don't want to do it. Like, what is it to say and how is it to say it? Well, let's, let, let's take... Um, Let's take a, an example that's um, a little bit different. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Like, like here's like, you're always late. Right. That's like a judgment on somebody. You're always late. Mm-hmm. Okay. If we take a step back from that and say, when you don't show up on time consistently, it makes me feel that I'm not valuable. All right. do, do you feel the difference mm-hmm. I do. between that? Yep. So if you can can take a step back and say it, and like lay out the situation rather than making a judgment on somebody or, um, you know, because that's a judgment, you know, you're always late. It's a statement. Mm-hmm. So. So, yeah. Does that kind of help? To kinda... Yeah, it, it does. And it kind of does uh, mitigate the passive aggressiveness that you might get from someone. It's exactly it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they come back and they're like, yeah. Yeah, so you're always like... Their little like... hairs are up on their neck and mm-hmm. their defenses are up. And, and then what happens is, uh, you know, whatever wounded part of you is speaking to the wounded part of them. And it's going like this because, you know, your adult brain kind of took a hiatus for a few minutes yeah, while your then, wounded part of you starts speaking. Yeah, and the wounded part of says, we said, you're always late. I'm like, well, you're late too, but you don't hear me complaining. I always be like, well, are you sure it's fine? <laughs> <laughs> so yes, there there are wounded parts of me, but you still try to give the, the party the benefit of the doubt that I'm like, well, I'm not always late, just, I leave out early enough, but shit happens in transition of me getting here. So it's it's not always me. You I mean you do take precautions for things, but people don't seem to take that in consideration that I would not be late if you would just be on time. Like you be on time for once. You come get me. I shouldn't always have to come get you. Like there should be a compromise. Well, again, it's in the way you say it, right? Yeah, yeah, it, it is. Yeah, but you know that passive aggressiveness is a mother. So it is, it is, and like I said, that's you know you start getting into that, and it's two wounded children just like going at each other. <laughs> so it just slips us, you know, this 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 part of us just kind of takes a back seat, and uh-huh. and uh, now, the other part starts talking. In your experience that you've dealt with with your couples and even your singles that you work with, do you seem to find uh, inklings, inklings and in even um, even hints of passive aggressiveness throughout relationships that come into uh, poly's, poly relationships? Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Uh-huh. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> you know, it's it's something it, it because it's a 
I mean, we kind of get taught a lot of that and just the way our families react to us and friends and, you know, things like that. So people, um, yeah, passive aggressiveness is kind of big. And, and again, it's like taking that step back. Let's kind of observe the behavior that's going on here Yeah, and really see what the problem is. Mm -hmm. So you can articulate it in a way where it's going to actually be received without the other person feeling attacked because people get passive aggressive when they feel attacked. Yes, they do. They really do. Yeah. Now, you personally, your relationships, have you dealt with it? And have you been the one who's been passive aggressive? Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> At least she's honest, people. <laughs> <laughs> I could get Dave on for you sometimes. No, no, that's okay. Well, no. <laughs> no, no. You know, because, you know, this is part of my journey is these are the ways that um, I used to function. And it's through going through, you know, knowing myself, becoming aware of all these different ways of being, um, you know, being passive aggressive or being the victim um, that I've been able to, you know, kind of transform a lot of that mm -hmm. and, um, you know, be able to be in these different spaces and communicate in a different way. Um, and that's why I like to help other people be able to do it. Because yes. it's not fun to stay in the messy part of it. It's just no. not. No, who wants that? Really, that's so stupid. Yeah. Let's let's be happy and grow. Uh, yeah. So in, in some of your trainings, not giving everything away, of course, but what are some of the exercises that you do to help people uh, compound that or just get rid of it in its entirety? You know, we do uh, definitely do some meaning making work. Meaning making? meaning what, making what the <laughs> hell is meaning making that's oh <laughs> I, you know what? I won't even comment i'll just ask what is it with us? okay you sarcastic <laughs> no because we all make meaning out of a situation okay right? all right yeah so um and, and and we start we have judgments right mm -hmm. So a lot of times when you're judging a situation or you're making meaning out of a certain situation, right? Uh, meaning making, because we're meaning making machines. That's what we are. We just, that's all we want to do is make meaning out of everything that happens to us. Okay. Um, so what we do is we can actually go through and take some of those things where um, we might be judging something in somebody else. And then we take and we see, well, how do we actually judge just like that? Mm -hmm. And when you can start seeing, because this is like that mirror aspect that I was talking about. Yeah. Um, when you can actually start seeing, oh, wow, I kind of do that too. Then it's like, once you start recognizing that, then you can go back and we can make different statements about that situation and make a new meaning out of it mm -hmm. so that you can move forward with things. Okay, that makes sense now. Yeah. Because you said that, I'm like, what the hell is meaning making? <laughs> like, are they Me making means or just making it up? <laughs> <laughs> Not means, meaning. Like, oh, but that's what you said, meaning making. Like, that's what I heard. It means in my head. <laughs> <laughs> That's the difference between society today, right? Yeah, it has to be. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my god, what is this white woman talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like I said, my brain works a little bit differently, so you just say things and I automatically get an idea like that would just like just went somewhere. <laughs> it went straight into the meal. Yeah, it really did. <laughs> And that would make some great memes, by the way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Leave it to Gail. She just takes it to another level. <laughs> oh, wow. Meaning making. Okay. All yeah, right. meaning making. We're meaning making and machines. Yes, yes. And so how, lo how long usually does that exercise last? It's like a couple of minutes. Or are you just like what you told me before to where... Y'all are looking at each other naked, but not looking at each other naked. <laughs> you and you're naked today. What is with you and you're naked today? Hey, 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 don't, don't, no, no, no. Shh, shh. Okay. That's for, that's for off camera. <laughs> <laughs> really? 
yeah, okay. really. <laughs> you know, it, it really depends on the person um, that I'm working with. Sometimes it could take a couple of sessions because mm -hmm. <laughs> they have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and then sometimes, you know, some people just kind of move through it and um, it just depends on how many different meanings we're having to break down. Because <laughs> if you give if you give somebody and just say, hey, I need a list of, you know, all these people that you're upset with or you're angry with or all that stuff. And it could be not just their spouse, but a whole bunch of different, you know, because this is um, not it's going to affect you in more areas than just with your partner. Mm -hmm. It's going to affect all your relationships. Yes. And so, um, you know, it just depends on the person's list. I had, I had one client, it took a couple of sessions to get through and we still didn't get through all of them, but then she had the tools to be able to turn around and do it herself. So, and that's where we want to go with that. Well, if I was one of your clients, my list would be super, super short. It'd just be one. It's I don't oh. care because I don't care about none of them. I mean, <laughs> they're exes for a reason, and that's um, it. Hmm. I don't know. You were just telling me something <laughs> different a few minutes ago. Like I said, they're exes for a reason. <laughs> There's no sense of bringing them up. <laughs> <laughs> They've moved on. So have I. Yes, we might have. Oh, but, but oh, what, oh, no. however, <laughs> what could you learn from all of those? Um, Are there some patterns in there that there's a lot of exes? I mean, there's not a lot of exes. I, it's not like I'm a selfish lover or anything. Just you can always learn something from your exes. Just are you willing to learn is the question. Yeah, exactly. And like, what, I, what I learned from them is not to ever bring them up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would have loved to like, be in a poly relationship. That way, everybody would have been happy. But you know what? Some people are just so uh, closed-minded that no one's really willing to explore on other people's happiness and build on it. It always has to be one or the other. Either you're happy or I'm happy. It's never we're happy together. So Yeah, and see, for me, like with anybody that I'm with, it, even, you know, everything that I went through with Dave, anybody that I've, I've known or dated or anything like that, ultimately, I always want the best for them. And because I know if I have the best for them, it's going to be the best for me. Mm -hmm. And if that means we're not together, I know it's the best. Yes. Yeah. And, and like earlier, I was talking to my mom. We was like, uh, like relationships or even love for that matter should not work or be based on conditions. Just because you buy me something or I give you something does not mean when you yeah. leave, you have to take it back. It should be like almost like a, um, a prenuptial. You came in with what you got, you leave with what you got. <laughs> what we got doing does not mean you need to take it with you after it's over, so. Those are called agreements, okay? And you know what? In the poly world, agreements are super important. I mean, if I agree to give you this dick and orgasm, that's it. That's all you need to take and give. Really. Like, come on now. <laughs> I just, just gotta be up front. Yeah, you, you really do. It seems so nowadays because you can't say nothing without going to court and be like, oh, that was a gift. I want it back. I'm like, no. Do you have it in writing? And it's always like, it's not what you know, it's what you can prove. And a lot of people can't the, a lot of people can't do that. The only thing they they can prove is they're full of shit. So <laughs> so I mean really? don't, don't give me the sad face. I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't know. Was that a sad face? It kind of looked it kind of looked like a sad, just like a sad and shit face at the same time, like, what? <laughs> I'm just gonna let you have that one. No, you can no. touch that one however you want. Hey, listen, lady, if you want to rebuttal it, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm more than willing to hear it. <laughs> no, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. No, I let's touch back on this okay. agreement. All right. Okay. Let's right. let's back up to that. Bring you back. You and your prenuptials with all because <laughs> that's what they are. No, because um, we're talking about poly relationships, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
So one of the, the, the really important things if you want to go into that area is to have agreements with um, whoever is going in. It's uh, other words, you're kind of it's kind of like you don't know what you're going to be shooting. And so, you know, some paint. of the things some of the things that you're going to be talking about is, you know, like how many partners, you know, who are you with? You're going to want to know sexual history. That's a that's important because mm-hmm. now it's not just one person you're with. It could be many people that you're with. Besides just the two that you're with, it could be more. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And so, um, you know, really being, you know, like, okay, how many partners are are we, you know, do we want in this? What's going to work? And then when it changes for somebody, you know, we're really counting on that person coming and saying, okay, this has changed for me or this has happened. I found somebody else and informing before just going out and doing it. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I just wish yeah. I knew of these people so I could talk to them more because there's are tons and tons of questions I would like to know. Like, are you given to poly just because you can be with someone and then still cheat at the same time? Well, is it cheating if everybody knows what's going on? I mean, I would like to think so, but some people don't always communicate like you say. They don't. Right. So yeah, it's a different way. Of, it's it's a different way. It's a different way of being and communicating. And, um, you know, if everybody's in the know, there's no cheating going on. Mm-hmm. Cheating yeah. is when you don't know what's going on. Right? I, yeah. Well, I've been, I've been cheating my whole life then, so. <laughs> Are you cheating on you, Will? I never cheat on me. I have oh, to good. make myself happy before anybody else. Oh, okay. Okay. But get into a poly relationship, I just don't know because if you come to an agreement, if we sit at this table and we talk about our wants and needs, our do's and our don'ts, and we have that agreement, but someone steps out of that agreement, how am I supposed to feel if I'm thinking we're doing one thing, but then you do another? Right. Yeah. And and there's consequences to that. Right. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, or you can also have, this is another agreement you can have is okay this is this is my intent and if i meet somebody and something happens um then i will come back and and tell you about it immediately afterwards okay okay so that's like an actual agreement that you can have Mm -hmm. and it just kind of helps to mitigate that to say okay yeah you know because it's when you do it and then you hide it and then it comes out and it's all messy after that it's you know um, not not a fun situation to be in. So, you know, it's really, if something happens and you're off at a business conference and something happens and you meet somebody and something happens, you come back and you, you just tell everybody right away. And you tell them, you know, this is what I did. And, and then you go from there. Okay, uh, I'll keep that in mind next time I go to the shirt club. So no problem. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah I, you know. Or I'll go to Walmart and I'll, you know, see a woman like, hey, you want to join my poly club? It's really nice. Everybody's coming. (laughs) Oh, gosh. (laughs) Good one. That was a good one. Yep. (laughs) We're all free with it. Don't worry. You come as you are, but you leave with something more than just your dignity. (laughs) Don't pay me no mind. I'm just sarcastic. So, <laughs> and hence the name of the show. Most definitely sarcasm and orgasm. And I'm joined by Gail Lynn. She is a relationship coach. Remember, <laughs> people, she will help you out with all things from single relationships to poly relationships. Hell, maybe a throuple, maybe four. I mean, it can go up to like ten relationships, but she can cover it all with you. So. <laughs> nice nice outro oh yeah most definitely you know i've been working on it just for the last five minutes so then it came up nice i take it we're done then 
Uh, I mean, we could be because, yeah. We, we really I mean, you ended it. it so well right there, so. <laughs> nah, nah, but you really did cover, like, some of the questions I had about polyamorous that we didn't get to cover last time. Um, okay. I now know more, so if I have anything else, I know who to come to. So. <laughs> Is it something you're actually considering? Um, if the right person comes along, yes. But right now, it's just me and Jesus. So. <laughs> just you and Jesus. All right. Of course, I don't think he's going to get naked. But you know what? Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> oh, well. but, it, but yeah, it's always a thing to consider because, uh, you know, why not? Why not try something if you find someone, find two parties who's willing you and just yourself? But yeah. you live in there. Well, you know, and there's, um, you know, something I didn't mention on the show is there's like groups out there. There's a ton of polyamory groups, even on Facebook mm-hmm. and stuff. Some of them you can't, you know, look for other people and some of them you can. Oh, all so, right. yeah. They're yeah. probably all old though. So their time is just way past their time. Uh, no, they're all different ages. Oh, really? And which ones are you in? Well, the one that that you can actually look for people is uh, one specific to Arizona. So, because, you know, kind of dumb to do one outside your state. Um, And then, so I don't know what they have in your area. Yeah, the other groups that I belong to are like ethical non-monogamy. They're like groups for people to, you know, come in and ask questions Mm -hmm. and stuff. But they don't want people like looking for people yeah well thankfully i got you here to ask any type of questions or answers that i might need so there you go and then of course i also have my mother she is uh she's real experienced streamer so (laughs) nice yes she's been out in these streets for like some 30 some years so she knows just a little bit of everything just a little bit yeah Yeah. just a little no not a little bit a lot she knows a (laughs) lot about a little bit (laughs) (laughs) i but i don't mean it in a mean way i mean it is she's experienced enough that if i need answers to question she will always be there she always has been just sometimes her little approach is very different than most so it's an older generation yeah yeah she's quite unique in her approach but she's very well rounded well rounded i want to say good yeah yeah so um so gail uh people want to find you you know come ask you questions get a hold of you how can they reach out to you yeah, so a couple different ways. So you can um, go to my website, relationshipsevolving.com. Uh-huh. Uh, definitely I'm on Facebook if you want to friend me under Gail Lynn Marsh. Um, I also have uh, Relationships Evolving with Gail Lynn as a business page. And if you're a woman, I do have a group for women uh, on Facebook where we just talk about strategies and advice and any questions that are coming up for women. So you can always ask to join that. And that's just under Relationships Evolving. And you can also email me at Gail, G-A-Y-L-E, at relationshipsevolving.com. So can I put on a wig and then join the group? You know, because... <laughs> <laughs> nice try. <laughs> I've actually had several guys ask to join, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, maybe they just want questions, and then, you know, hook up in the DMs. You never know. Come on, <laughs> yeah, I know. That's just it. <laughs> But yes, thank you so much, Gail, for coming on. I really appreciate uh, we covering more than we did last time. Of course, I always have a blast talking to you because you're just so open, so wonderful, and just so brainy when it comes to these things. It's like going back (laughs) to school all over again. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Thanks, Will. I have a lot of fun with you. No problem. And once again, thank you so much for joining me. This has been another episode of Sarcasm and Orgasms. I'm Will, and I'll talk to y'all soon.